Hello everyone, this is Diane. I am here to show you my finished antique ledger book. If you've watched the previous videos that go along with this journal, you will know that I have decided to um, preserve some of my ledger pages. I had a huge variety of vintage and antique ledger and log books and I thought I should just preserve some of those pages and then I would feel free to go ahead and use the rest in journal projects. And along with that, I decided to save a lot of my vintage and antique ephemera pieces, too. Uh, and you'll see all kinds of stuff in here. Um, some colorful stuff and whimsical stuff and some really old antique stuff. So it's quite eclectic, but it's all vintage. And then I am making a similar book with this ledger, which is the same size. And I'll tell you the measurement in a minute. And um, I've got the pages already selected, and I've just started adding some of the ephemera. So this one will go in my shop when it's done. I have spent the last couple of weeks actually scanning in vintage and antique ephemera pieces and ledger papers into my computer so that I can make digitals with them. So you can be watching for those in the next few weeks too. So this is my ledger book. I don't know that I'll actually write in it. Its main purpose is just to preserve these antique and vintage pieces that I have. This is seven and a half inches wide, and I believe my ruler is too short for it. I believe it's 14, nope, uh, 12 and three quarters high. Um, you'll see that I added a lot of my vintage, well, this is vintage and this is vintage, these pieces, and maybe this. I think I got this in a Happy Mail, so I don't really know anything about that. And then these are Tim Holtz pieces, and this is a Tim Holtz piece. So it has my initials, DMH, and this is one of those pieces. I forgot what these are called, but I just put it there because I thought it looked cool. And this metal is quite heavy. I added the gold brads. There's gold trim on it. And um, then I added this Tim Holtz piece to it. It says ink and paint department, so I thought that was appropriate. And this is one of my pen nibs that I recently got at a vintage, or at an antique mall, and I have one set of those left in the shop. I could probably, I, at, when I was looking for my metal pieces, I have more of these than I thought I did, so I could put another set in the shop, so I would have two in there. And then this is what I used to glue all of these pieces down glossy accents. I put Tim Holtz fabric on the spine. There are five signatures. I put some ribbon along the edge of the fabric. And I believe each of the five signatures has ten folded papers. So 40 pages per signature. On the inside cover it wasn't very attractive, and I thought about gluing down some of the antique paper that had antique ledger that had been written on. Um, but then I decided I wanted to save some of my vintage well, uh, wrapping paper too that I love. So I just took pieces of wrapping paper. There's a yellow rose, and then this one with the little girl on it that is so adorable, and patched them together. And there's more wrapping paper on the back side. And then I'm, I just glued in one of my Tim Holtz um, slotted pockets that I make with the die so that I could add some more little piece, pieces of ephemera. There's a little vintage Denison yellow rose there. This journal may take a while to go through because I want you to see all the ephemera. If you love vintage ephemera, you will love seeing things in this book. So this is a little receipt from 1888 and um, I got a lot of things from John A. Biles in one in a box. It was a cigar box. You may remember seeing that in my video when I got it. There's a shoe tag. I think I got this on Etsy from somebody and a cigarette card. I have never found them here. They're pretty much, the cigarette and tea cards are a British thing. 
Um, so I don't find them here. I got that on eBay. There's a beautiful little girl card, little playing card. So this was a good way to save her and a price tag. And I got this from Nancy from Wishes and Weeds on Etsy. Wishes and Weeds store is her Etsy shop and I think she still has them in there. It's a little milk ticket. So all the ledger pages that you see are old ledger pages and some of them are very old. Here is another book or a shoe tag, shoe store tag that I put there as a little tuck spot. And then this is just a little, came off a tablet and it says Bacon Stickney and Company, Coffee, Spices and Baking Powder, Albany, New York. Just one little piece. I didn't have the tablet, just must have been in a box of stuff I got. And then this was just one of the cut off pieces of one of the ledgers. And I used this page that has a tab with a D on it and the H is in the next signature for my initials. There's a smaller ledger page. And I did some collages on some of the pages and each collage features at least one vintage piece. So there's a ticket right there for Crystal Beach Park. I did get some vintage tickets on Etsy or yeah, Etsy a few years ago, so that's probably that's one of those. <clears throat> and it has some vintage wallpaper. This is from a vintage book and this is from a vintage book. This is cut off a vintage ledger, so everything there is vintage. Here's one of the cigarette cards. This is a beat up rose card. It was creased and I just glued it down there. This is a um, billhead sheet. I got several tablets of this a few years ago and um, I wanted to preserve some of the stamps that I have. Most of these stamps are from my mother's collection. So I glued that to the front of my little 2x2 two two envelope and then put a couple of stamps that I like inside. And I believe I have two of these envelopes in this book. And I just paper clipped the envelope to the page. And this was paper clipped to the back side. This is another receipt from John Biles in that cigar box. It's a freight bill to New York Lake Erie and Western Railroad Company. And this is October 9th, 1883. Um, must be his union dues. Oh, it says Union Station. For transportation. Okay, so it was actually his ticket. For transportation from Waverly. I wonder if that's Waverly, New York. That's where my son lives. It's a little town right across the state border from me. And here is a tablet that has lines on it and it has this uh, thing to fill out. Must be for homework, assignment number, name, period. So that was pretty cool paper. Some more ledger. And on this, I just have clipped a vintage um, greeting card. The very cute little girl. I wanted to preserve some of the greeting cards for myself. <clears throat> this is a log book. And this might have been the radio, the ham radio book, log book that I have. On some of the pages, I took some of my vintage tickets and things like that and just um, put a brad. This is a Tim Holtz brad with a number on it and just punched a hole through the tickets and the page and just attached them. So this is a, a bus ticket, I believe, from England. So I got that from Etsy. This is a, a receipt that I got in one of my bundles of old papers. And this is a um, homogenized milk ticket. And this probably came from Nancy also at Wishes and Weeds. And here is a little photo postcard, just a miniature one, and it's torn. It's got some of the pieces of the photo missing, and it was in a scrapbook. And it's um, Giant Papa in Florida, or Papa, I'm not sure how to say that. I thought it was a pretty picture, so I put that in there. You can see this tab on the edge of that page. Here's one of the tall ledger pages. And this is a small ledger page. This might have been from a railroad log book. And I love it that it has green and red type in it. 
And this one is fully written on in pencil, but I believe one of the other signatures has a blank page of this. Paper clip to this is just this sheet of paper. It says desk memorandum. I don't know how old this is, but it's from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And then this is a receipt from the Meredith Bottling Works in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. This was the pink copy. There's some more of that radio logbook. So on some of the pages I used glassine bags and envelopes so I could tuck ephemera into them without hiding too much of the ledger. And this holds one of my really cool antique calling cards, the Victorian calling cards. And a bluebird that's a Denison sticker. I got a whole earth. I don't know if it was Denison, but it was a whole little box of these seals. So I put one on there. I might cover it up with a new one because it must be the glue was still wet when I closed the book and so some of this pink paper stuck to that bird. So I might cover him up. I have quite a few of those. So This is a nice pretty pink paper and I don't know what it is because it's in German. In a Happy Mail I received a whole packet of German ledger and receipts and things so I put some of them in here. This is a little postcard photo of Niagara Falls. And I picked this up at the flea market, um, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Company. So I, I had quite a few, um, well, not a whole lot, but a variety of vintage tags. And so I did, I, I scanned them. And so you will be seeing um, a digital of vintage tags and tickets in one digital set. Here's a playing card that I got with a, a pink roof on the cottage. So I keeping that for my pretty pink cottage shop. This one has um, an envelope from another set of papers. I got the John Biles stuff and then all in the same year. That was like at the very beginning of this flea market season and then later I got a whole bunch of stuff from the 20s and 30s from Nathan Trail and then a week or two after that I got another box of stuff from the 40s from his son Charles. So I got three three sets of vintage ephemera from different time periods. So this is one of the envelopes and this was written to him from his son Charles. I love that it has all these colored stamps and the postmark was on the on the back which is now you can't see it. So I wrote in pencil 1933 right here. And it's open right here on the end of the envelope, and so the letter is inside. And then tucked behind it is a receipt. It was, um, this was in my dad's folder, so that's my dad's name, and this was 1974. And this was... I'm not sure. It's, I think it's one of the trails, either Nathan or his son. Um, but I love that it has punched out, paid, and the numbers on it. And um, 1941. It says 193, but they wrote 41 over it. So this is probably Charles. And then I got this receipt from John Biles, 1890. $20. Isn't that gorgeous? So, And that's very fragile. Here's another glassine envelope. And on the outside of it, I decorated it with a vintage gift tag and another of the little pink dairy tickets from Nancy. And then I have this pink receipt from X-Lines Pure Service and another Biles receipt in 1887. So the other book that I'm going to make will also be made with the vintage ledger papers and logbook sheets and also it will contain 
vintage ephemera. I didn't realize I already had one of those dairy tickets over here. Oh well. Here's a little gift enclosure that is vintage and I just glued that on as a tuck spot. And I put in one of my View, View Master reels with the envelope from Colonial Williamsburg because my husband and I went there a couple of times. So I wanted to save that. And here's the next signature and it has the H and uh, an author's playing card of Louisa May Alcott. There's a receipt, a blank one, and it has the stub here. And then this is something, I don't even know really what it is, but it's 1918. City Market, Pine Avenue and 19th Street. So I don't know if it's some sort of a transportation ticket. But it's pretty cool. I got a tablet of those. This is a letterhead from a courthouse in Tawanda, Pennsylvania from the 1930s. This is from a hardware store. This was a computation book from a college and it's written on in blue and red ink. Someone used it for their some sort of math class. There's lots of computing on this computation paper. This is one of the really old ones that's written in um, pencil and it has all sorts of um, like general store supplies. Crackers, salmon, sugar, candles, roast beef, rubbers, I'm sure that's boots, graham crackers, soda, bread, butter, cookies, etc. So it was the store's log book, I think. And I decorated it with um, a collage and then these scattered stars that are vintage. They were Denison seals. I fold, It was a very long page and it's quite fragile, but I folded it up and glued it here to form a pocket. And in here is a pink receipt bought of W.B. Fonda, manufacturer of sash, doors, blinds, and moldings, stair work and interior finish. Bought some lath for a dollar twenty. It's nineteen oh one. Wow. So I remember getting these receipts. There's a bunch of these kind of receipts, and I put a few different ones at the flea market. They were in um, sheets on page protectors and very nicely displayed. And I paid a dollar or two or three dollars for each sheet, but it was worth it. And I scanned them. I mean, uh, some of the sheets had two or th two or three papers in them, but some only had one because they were bigger. But anyway, I scanned them, and they will be appearing in my shop in digital form. I hope these shadows aren't too bad. It's it's dark here. This is 1891, and I believe this was part of that purchase with the um, page protectors. And then this is one of my antique postcards. Isn't she pretty? This is some sort of ledger. It has people's names and or items and prices and stuff. Maybe we'll know what the kind of ledger it is when we see the other side. Here is some yellow ledger which is really cool and a glassine envelope and this has a check from Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad Company. So it's a paycheck. And this is dated 75. And then this is uh, another handwritten receipt from John Biles and his things. 1843. I love the writing. So I wonder if that's the oldest piece that I have. So these were all folded up so tiny and tucked into, crammed into this little cigar box that they had compartmentalized with little pieces of wood. And then they wrote on the outside that would, that would show some information about the receipt. But I folded it this way so I could see it better. There is a vintage German scrap piece on the envelope. So I get to save some of those in here too. Here's a blank receipt from a union. And this is the one I was talking about in a previous video from the little um, 
country store that was in the town where I grew up, Allen and Mitchell. This is 1972, and um, Petey Allen was was the Allen, and we called it. We just called the store Petey's. <laughs> we would go down there and buy penny candy. And this is a railroad receipt, Agent Stub. It's a tag. So I scanned that too with my tags and tickets. This is from a church treasurer's log where she was, um, or he, was keeping track of the parishioners' contributions to the church. This was a lo long page. I just cut this section out of it. And I have a place to keep one of these gorgeous, one of my very favorite playing cards that I've found. Uh, I've had a whole set of those, and I've sold them and put them in journals, but I, I wanted to make sure I kept one. This is a long, a wide ledger. Um, this one is newer. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's yellow and green, mostly yellow. And I saved this bridge tally. I purchased these from a an, an Etsy seller, and I purchased them for myself, not to put in books that I was giving away, or selling, I mean. So I put her here so I can keep her. There were maybe four little doll type of tally cards, so I'll have to find a place for the others, or at least another one in here. There's another ledger with very nice printing. Doesn't look quite as old. 1955. Broom County Technical Institute Laboratory Report. Broom County, Binghamton, New York. I don't know if you've ever heard of Binghamton. 1955. This is the center of the signature. Here I made a belly band. This is the blank side of that yellow ledger. And it's a ledger page, piece of a ledger page and a little scrap that had gotten cut off of one of the pages and a little scrap of vintage um, ant sheet music. And I had this one little sheet that came out of a little book it's a ledger. I tuck that in there. And this is one of my antique um, advertising cards. And this is in my shop already in the advertising cards. I have two or three different advertising cards, digital sets. So this is that long ledger, the wide one that says Lessee on it. It's the church ledger. This one has a, a little snippet of this gorgeous um, wallpaper that I wanted to save. Here's another of the tallies. So I did keep another one. And another Niagara Falls photo postcard. Just a little miniature one. Uh, this is that ledger I said maybe we would... Oh, it's in German. It's, it, it's, it was in that batch of stuff in my Happy Mail. So I don't know what kind of account that is. This is one of my vintage, my uh, Victorian cards that I got at the flea market. I just put that in. This is also in digital form in my shop. And here's a receipt, William E. Dyer, doctor. <laughs> Dealer in dry goods, groceries, drugs, boots, and shoes, hardware, and agricultural implements. So I don't know where the doctor comes in there. And it's 1905 and 1906, it says. So I had several of these receipts, and I used one of them uh, to, to scan, so that will be in my shop. On this one, I took, this is from the Trail family. This was in Nathan Trail's um, box of stuff from the Harrisburg Polyclinic Hospital. His wife was institutionalized for a few years. And so there was a lot of correspondence with that hospital. And so I wanted to, I loved that vintage envelope with the window and I wanted to preserve that. So I put this piece of ephemera that I've had for years from the railroad company, Erie Lackawanna Railroad Company. So I just folded that up to fit in there and you can see it through that window. From the hardware store again. Here I made a pocket. This piece is not vintage, um, but the fabrics and laces are. 
and this is, isn't that so cool? 1888. And this was in the John Biles box of stuff that I got. And I put this greeting card in there. Somebody put initials right here, B, C, and H. So they must be the people who gave the card. I think I put this in the front, maybe. Oh, I put it in the back. Third signature. We have a... This is a science logbook. Observations and computations and conclusions on this page. And there's a vellum envelope with the Lamplighter Limited card in it. And this was, a, it's a membership card. And it's probably not very old, maybe 70s or 80s. And it was a little gift shop that was in my town. And there's a yellow rose on that. Denison sticker. Another Niagara Falls card. And a little Mother Goose children's card with um, Eloise Wilkin illustrations from the Little Golden Book. That opens up and here we have experiment number, title, object of experiment, apparatus and materials, diagram or drawing, and procedure. So I got this notebook at a flea market and here's another receipt from 1899. I tucked I glued this vintage envelope on here as a tuck spot. I like the blue envelope. I don't know the date of that envelope. And it just has an order record from Spiegel in it. And again, no date. I, I, I can't read it. Of course, the stamps always cover the crucial part of the date when you want it. It says 19-something that you can't read. I'll put that in later. And I love this check, and I did scan this. Um, the First National Bank, Cooperstown, New York. And so this is Leather Stocking, which is a character from James Fenimore Cooper's story, The Last of the Mohicans. So Cooperstown was named after James Fenimore Cooper. And isn't that where the Baseball Hall of Fame is? I'll put that in the envelope later. This is, oh, this is, that's a, on a little ledger page and another little ledger page. This is part of one of those really old Biles receipts from 1888, and I told you they were very fragile where they had been folded, and this had just come off. So I glued it there and added a stamp. This ledger is from 1932. And here I just paper clipped on this vellum piece, and this is German. More of that fragile ledger, and I folded it up. I didn't put anything in that pocket. I'll probably have to put something there because it's, it's just going to keep tearing. This is a Ch Chicago transfer ticket and uh, antique calling card and another of the Mary or um, Eloise Wilkin playing cards. Mary had a little lamb. This is a vellum bag that was for caramel coated corn. It has um, a gusset here and I love that it's so long and skinny. I've, I've hoarded that for a while. So I just folded up one of the um, German papers. This one is green. Just so it would be the right size. I'll put that in later. And then this flaps open. Here is a price tag made to measure. And it's clipped to a small ledger page that I... I this is not a vintage ledger. <clears throat> this is... Um, I think it's the ham radio log. And this is kind of almost like rice paper, but it's Albany College of Pharmacy. And this, I believe, is from the 20s or 30s, maybe the 30s, but it was in this broken binder that I got at an antique store. And it had some pages that were written on and some that were blank. 
I saved some of my antique French flower seed labels. So here's a Snapdragon one on a coffee dyed glassine bag, and here's another of my tickets. Um, Guernsey Brothers and Company manufacturers of Keen Crackers and wholesale dealers in cigars and confectionery, Keene, New Hampshire. Um, so this is going to be in my tags and tickets digital. I'll have to put something behind here. I do have more ephemera I want to add. Here's another tally card. I won't take it off, but it's a pretty rose tally card. And another collage. Um, the only antique things here are a little scrap from Ledger and this German scrap. This is another tally card, a purple one. And this is German, but it was just this long strip. So I just put it over the top of this and clipped on the tally card. do that right. This is something I bought from an eBay seller a few years ago and I just wanted to save one. I don't know how old it is but it's just a label. Receipt for payroll deduction. This is 1939 and this is a Penn Central probably bus ticket. There's some German scrap right there. And another belly band made out of a scrap from a ledger from 1953. Vintage sheet music. Keystone Coca-Cola Bottling Company. I actually bought these from the paper basket. And it's from Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure where, where Katie lives. I don't remember. Well, I don't think it's in Pennsylvania. But anyway, when I saw she had these from Pennsylvania, I wanted some. So I bought some of those several years ago. So I'm keeping one. And this is a silverware coupon that I got in a batch of stuff. Another ledger page in German. And I saved... This is 1932. I saved another... A reel in this clear acrylic sort of envelope which you you had to peel the backing off and then just stick it down and this is Home of Santa's Workshop in North Pole New York USA which is in the Adirondacks and my family and I went there when I was a kid so I had to save that one. Some more ledgers and another envelope sewn on, or not sewn on, glued on as a pocket uh, no date here if there's a date on the letter inside. This is actually, um, see the black border? This is an invitation to a funeral. 18, 1888. So that's pretty old. And Willie will roam no more. <laughs> Put that in later. And then tucked behind the envelope is a, re a receipt from, this is just 1986, but it's it was in my parents' folder and this is my mother's writing. All this writing here. She must have just used her receipt as a list or something, but I wanted to save it because it's got her writing. And then this is an antique postcard. She's so pretty. I believe she's in my shop in the antique postcard digital. Where did this come from? I'll have to look, watch my video and see where I had that. Um, this is from the experiment book, and this is a vintage little gift enclosure card, and it's adhered to clear plastic with some a design printed on it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a, a gorgeous little birdhouse, and it opens up. Isn't that cute? And signature four, I believe, and this has one of those clear acetate um, letter cards that I had gotten at an, 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 ugh, an antique mall. It's got my letter on it. And this 
is just a lined paper with some uh, spaces, page number 60A and something, Pennsylvania, and then the date, excuse me, there's a room for a date, and then there's a little daily time slip. This is a scrap from a modern scrapbook paper, but I just love that design, so I put it on there. There's a little vintage card that I love, and another Biles receipt. No date on this one, but it's probably from the 1800s. Most of his were from the 1800s. Some went into the early 1900s, but not the handwritten ones. Now this one is this very brittle ledger. It was this, like a tall, skinny one. I'm If I have some of these pages in the other one, I'm going to take them out because look at all the reinforcing I had to do. <laughs> Even gluing gluing this down and then the, it cracked over here so I had to glue this down so and I already had it sewn into the book but it seems pretty good now so this is wallpaper this is wallpaper and this is antique music cheap music claim check there's another ledger that's probably not very old and another stamp envelope that's from Poland with this pretty clock on it Love that one. Some flowers. I believe Magyar is Hungary, is it not? On this page, this is where I did the collage with the piece of spine from this actual ledger that had the printing on it. We've got some um, wallpaper here. These pieces are not vintage. And then I had to add some washi tape down here because it started to crack at the edge of the wallpaper. So I'm just patching as I need to with these vintage pages. Another uh, ledger from the Tawanda Courthouse from the 1930s. I'm not sure where I got that. I think somebody sent it to me. So I don't know if it's antique, but I think it was with some German scrap pieces. So I think that's a piece of German scrap, and I love it, so I glued it in there. Another vintage seed label. Here is one of those green and red um, railroad. I think it's a time log book, and it, this one doesn't have any writing on it. Another set of tickets, and this is a bridge. I don't know what it was for, but it came with a set of bridge stuff. The game bridge. Um, anyway, they're clipped on there with a brad. Another envelope used as a pocket, and this one didn't have anything in it, and I put this on it. This is one that I, one of those things I purchased in the um, page protectors, and this is 1893, and it's C.H. Cross and Company Confectionery from Montpelier, Vermont, 101 Main Street. So dealers in Cigars and Nuts, crackers, breads, and cakes. So they bought, I'm not sure what that says, Eagle chocolates, I think. Um, some kind of caramels, pralines, and peppermint drops, I believe. Isn't that cool? And then this is Earl S. Johnson Wholesale Fruit and Produce Potatoes, a specialty, and that's from Naples, New York. These things are just so cool. I'm glad I get to keep this stuff. This is my favorite ledger, and it's pink and purple and blue lines. I get to keep a piece of that. And here's another one of those cards that's glued to the clear plasticky stuff, and it opens up. Roses are red, violets are blue. You better love me as much as I love you. <laughs> this is a receipt that that um, it was my dad's. It has his name there. It doesn't have his handwriting, but um, and it's from 1967. There's a little of those acrylic envelopes that that I peeled off and stuck. I love that it's so little. And I have some more of these envelopes, and some that are yellow, but they're see-through, that I can use in the other journal. And this is a piece of German scrap. And I just thought it looked so pretty sitting in that envelope and you can still see the ledger behind it. 
Then we have this, which is an old um, photo corner envelope, and I got it in a box of postcards or something, and there was, I think, one photo corner left inside. Oh, it's still in there. <laughs> I think I'll take it out so I can use it on something. And inside I tucked this Railway Express um, ticket, and it's from Sayre. That's where I live. Um, but this is going to North Carolina. So this is a railroad town. We have a couple of railway stations that have been turned into restaurants. I think one's a restaurant and one's a museum now. And this is a page from an old one of the old ledgers that I've used in here. This is just like the front page and it's cardstock, so it's quite heavy. Very vintage wallpaper here. Antique or er, vintage tatting and lace and a cigarette card. And this is an antique advertising card. And I got this from a seller on Etsy some time ago. She's not a tally card, she's just a little little greeting card, little note card. Hallmark. So I don't know how old it is, but I love her. I got a set of them and I'm keeping them. I bought them for me. Some wallpaper here to reinforce where it was tearing. You can see that I reinforced the centers of some of these fragile papers. But because of the height of this, and I was doing five signatures, and moving it back and forth and around and trying to get the stitches in, um, it was rough on some of these fragile papers. And I was being as careful as I could. There's some vintage uh, German scrap there. And another piece right there. And a nice little collage. This is from an antique um, seed catalog. It was from an old scrapbook and one of those labels and this was just a label that, I, that came in a box of something that I got 10 baggage tags 15 cents it's still sealed so I just stuck it in there and this is the flocked letter that came in the same kit of stuff that I got that acetate one at, at an antique store and it's my last initial another vellum or glassine little sack and a Biles receipt and there's a little gift tag there and I love that this is on blue paper look at that writing I don't see a date on this one 1855 It says account of dishes bought on the on the back of this. <laughs> and here I just took an envelope. I'm not sure if I got these from Denise's shop. I've had them for a while, but I love the clear window there. And I just put in one of my Victorian calling cards. And I love this ledger too. This is one of the German ones, I believe. I like that it's divided up into these small sections. Can you see that? So here we have a German ledger and a, a greeting card. It's got that little tab stuck on it. And then in here, this this was large paper, so it's folded up, and then the sides are folded in. I did cut here so that this could be folded down. And this has a um, vintage telegram in it, which was in the scrapbook that I bought with all the greeting cards. Um, 1955, maybe? I think, or no, 1949. got a 
Got to get done with this before my camera shuts off. Told you this would be a while. Another piece of old wallpaper and an old school lunch ticket. Oh, and I love this. I bought this box of little seals. They used to come in little flat boxes. And this one had the sailor. So I think these are from the 40s. And it says, hurry up, this is for a sailor. So you're supposed to put that on the outside of your envelope. Isn't that so cool? So I got to keep one of those and a little gift card. It's vintage. And a bridge um, score sheet. And another Biles receipt. 1842. I think that's the oldest one. I think the other one was 1843. And then this from the Erie Lackawanna Railroad Company, clearance form A. There's a collage with a vintage star sticker and a stamp, Polish stamp. And this store, store ledger again with all the groceries being purchased. Another greeting card. This is so pretty. The glitter has turned brown. I don't know what color it was, but it, maybe it was that color. But I love the little birds. And look at what the glue did. The glue that holds the glitter on. 1946. So I'm getting to keep a lot of ephemera in this journal. And you can bet I'm going to make another something, a lap book or something, so that I can just keep on keeping some of the ephemera that I acquire. French seed packet, um, another receipt, 1881. This is from Biles. And this is from Biles. Lehigh Valley Railroad Company. So I wonder if he worked for the railroad company. This is groceries. So it might have been the company store, 1879. I'll just stick this here for now till I figure out what I'm supposed to do with that stuff. This is some kind of a register, guest register it says. Um, more German, and this is German scrap here that my friend Pirio sent me and I have never wanted to get rid of it. So it's staying right here. And this beautiful little playing card goes right there. Hurry up, Diane, before the camera shuts off. <laughs> I'll have to fix that. Um, here's one of the receipts that was in that in the page protectors, and this is Pennsylvania Baking Company, Crackers, Cakes, and Biscuits, Scranton, Pennsylvania. And this was in a book that I bought. Somebody drew those profiles. And I've kept it. It was a couple years ago that I found that. And then we have the Popsicle bag. And a bridge score sheet. It's pretty brittle and this IBM Club Swap and Shop card. Get tucked up into there. And then here is the wrapping paper on the back. There's this wedding paper in the pretty blue and white with the doily design. And then this gorgeous paper here with the little girls and toadstools and deer and skunks and bunnies and birds and flowers. It's just so cute. So there it is. I'm sorry that it took so long, but I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the elements that are in this book. And I hope that you will come back to see what I end up putting in this ledger. And um, I probably won't show process videos on this one because I did it for this one. So the next time you see this one, it should be complete and in my shop. So thank you so much for watching, and I must go. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.